video I'm going to cover how to do chi-square analyses, both goodness of fit and independence tests, using Vasserstat's website. So the great thing about Vasserstat's is they make a lot of cool online calculators. And if you already have a frequency table for your chi-square, it can be quite tedious to enter it all into uh, SPSS to analyze. And so there are some neat calculators online that'll let you enter a completed um, contingency table or a frequency chart that will give you the information you need for chi-square without having to go through all the trouble of entering several hundred lines in SPSS. Alright, so to get to this website I just googled Vasserstat's chi-square. Um, they have a ton of different cool things online that you can use, but we're going to use their goodness of fit test and their contingency table versions. And so what I've done is take some data from my own university about the different statistics courses on campus. Uh, I'm actually in the psychology department, so we get a bad rap sometimes that we're the easiest class. Um, and so people want to take our version instead of the math stats version. So we have three different courses that all count as the same um, statistics-based course. And I just looked at the grade distributions for classes because our Student Government Association prints this thing and found that in one particular semester there were 25 A's in um, Psych 200, um, 18 in Sociology Statistics, and 11 in Math Statistics. So just looking at this, it would seem as if our class was the easiest because we were giving the most A's, but let's see if that's actually true. All right, so what we want to do to make this work is go to uh, Vassar Stats and use their goodness of fit test. It's a goodness of fit test because there's only one variable or one row. And I'm going to enter all of the uh, observed values here under observed frequencies. And so those are all the scores that I actually found in the study. So the next thing I'm going to do is come up with my expected fre frequency. We could also do expected proportion, so it would be 33% in each one. But it gets a little grumpy at you sometimes if your um, numbers don't perfectly add up to 100% or um, your frequencies don't quite add up. So I find it easier to enter the raw frequency values. So to do that, I'm going to do 25 plus 18 plus 11. So that means I have 54 people total in this study. And I'll divide that by three because I have three different categories. So I would expect 18 people in each category. And I'm going to enter that over here. So 18, 18, and 18. And that's all you got to do. So you scroll down a little bit and you hit calculate. It will enter the expected proportions for you. Like I said, if those are nice even numbers, you can enter expected proportion instead. Um, but when you have thirds, it gets a little cranky. It tells me my observed frequencies, my expect fre expected frequencies match, which is what you need. And then here's chi-square here. So 5.44. Uh, degrees of freedom is 2, so it's categories minus 1. And then here's my p-value. So if I wanted to write that up for an APA style, first thing I do is got to find that chi symbol here. <clears throat> Let's see, chi-square is this one. I don't know why it went to the next page. There we go. <clears throat> so there, now it looks like an official chi-square. Oops, don't do that. Word thinks it knows best sometimes, right? So we put degrees of freedom here is equal to, what do we say, 5.44 and P is 0.07. And so that would be how you would write that up in APA style to show that your chi-square was not significant because P is not less than 0.05. So um, in essence, what I'm saying is that our class isn't the easiest. We all give approximately the same number of A's. Well, if you were more interested in particular professors in one department, so we looked at three different professors in the psych department and their grade distributions of A, B's, and C's. So now I have two different variables, which means this is going to be 
a independence chi-square because I want to know if the rows and columns are independent. So the point of this type of test is to look at um, if rows and columns are um, the patterns are the same. So does Professor 1's ABC pattern match Professor 2's ABC pattern? Or do I have to know that this is Professor 1 to predict how many A's they're going to have? You can also think about it going down. So does the pattern of A's for Professor 1, 2, and 3 match the pattern of B's for Professor 1, 2, and 3? If the patterns match, their um, the null hypothesis would be supported, saying that they're all approximately the same pattern. If the patterns don't match what you would expect, you would reject the null hypothesis and say that there are different patterns for each professor. All right. So for that type of statistic, I'm going to use the contingency table uh, version of Vassar stats and asks you first to pick the number of rows and columns. This can only go up to a five by five, which is a pretty big chi-square. So I'm gonna do three by three. So that'll color code things for me here. So I wanna do five, six, five, and then 12, four, three, and then 11, nine, three. So just type in all of your numbers and hit calculate. So it gives me my row totals and my column totals and the total number of people in the study. Um, and then it also gives me my chi-square value down over here. So chi-square on this one is 4.82 at four degrees of freedom. That is uh, rows times one, uh, rows minus one, so three minus one is two, times columns minus one, three minus one is two, so it's four to get the degrees of freedom. And then my p-value out here. So let's copy this, make it a little easier. Type up. Okay, so there are four degrees of freedom. That's 4.82. And my p value is 0.31, which definitely means it's not significant because um, it's not less than 0.05. So the professors have all the same grade distributions. So it doesn't really matter which professor you take. Now it's tempting that two and three look like they're better than Professor One, but it's actually the same pattern of A, B's, and C's. It also is going to give you Kramer's V, or phi, and that statistic is an effect size for chi-square, but only for independence tests. It doesn't work for goodness of fit tests. So the way that's calculated is uh, chi-square divided by n times degrees of freedom smaller. So whichever one is smaller, rows minus one or columns minus one. In this particular case, they're the same. And then take the square root of that whole thing. Um, and so that will give you a measure of how related the rows and columns are. Um, and so larger Kramer's V's equal larger effect sizes. Okay. Now Vassar stats does give you a warning about uh, cell frequencies. So it doesn't want you to use um, observed values with lots of small frequencies, small frequencies being less than five, or it kind of gives you a little warning that you should maybe do Fisher's exact test. Uh, and so Fisher's exact is a better calculator for um, cells with low frequencies, and that's less than five. It will also freak out if you have cells that have zero frequencies in them. Okay, if you have those situations, your assumptions for independence chi-square aren't totally met, as so you should do a Fisher's exact test. The other things it gives you is these percent deviations and standardized residuals, and so those would be things that you would look at if it were significant. And I've always heard that you should look at standardized residuals larger than two, because that's the cutoff score is about 1.96 for z-scores, and standardized residuals are z-scores. So anything larger than two, uh, more negative or more positive, indicates that that cell is very different than what would be expected. And in our particular case, since nothing was significant, you see that none of them are over two. Okay. <clears throat> And so that is how you'd run both an independence and a, a goodness of fit chi-square using Vassar Stats website, which is much easier to do um, when you have the data in this format, where you already have the frequency table or the contingency table. There are other websites that are just as great. This just happens to be one of my favorite ones.